Today we will explore how you can connect your do-it-yourself broadcast electronics with professional broadcast devices such as switches, cameras, routers, etc. using Reactor and the Blue Pill here. So the cool thing about Blue Pill and Skyhoist platform, which is the Reactor panel management software, is that it can read any raw panel device. And all Skyhoist controllers, the kinds that look like this, they are raw panel devices. And one of the features of that is that the panel itself will tell Reactor who it is, what it can do, which buttons it has, knobs, faders, and how you can light up buttons, etc. If there are relays, if there are uh, LEDs behind and displays, etc. I think maybe I've repeated myself a few times, but all these nice features are described in what is called a topology. And that means we can create absolutely yet unknown panels that Reactor will recognize immediately. Let me show you what I mean. So I'll just put the blue pill right here. You see this nice little setup is actually really, you know, this is homegrown electronics, right? We have here, this is, um, it's not an Arduino, but it's called Ether Mega, but it is like an Arduino kind of thing. And we'll be using the Arduino software platform to create a raw panel device out of this one on this fancy chipboard. So we have a relay here with a little LED that will light up when the relay is um, um, turned on. Then we have an LED strip, which we can light up with RGB colors. We have two buttons over here that we'll use uh, to do actions on an ASM switch. And we have a dome button that could be in a game show, right? Right here, and it actually has a backlight, which is maybe a little bit difficult to see because of all the lighting in my studio here. Then we have a uh, rotary, a potentiometer and a linear potentiometer. And this configuration will be mapped into Reactor. So let's just go ahead and add this as a panel. Now, the only thing is that, um, because if I had one of the Skahoy panels like the Airfly or, or one of these beautiful panels that you probably have seen in a lot of videos, usually if you go into Discover Panels, they will pop up on the network. Unfortunately, with this very, very simple configuration, I have not made it discoverable on the network but it is still possible to add it. I know the IP address. The IP address is over in the Arduino code. So actually, if I just scroll to the top of my sketch here, you can see that I put it on this IP address. So that is easy. I will just quickly go in here, add this panel and type in the IP address that I had right here. I can also see that I'm starting it up on the usual raw panel port 9923. I think I may not need to add that because that is the default port. So if I just do this, let's see. Yes, it connected. It says panel, so very generic, and it's ID2, but it is connected. And what we'll do now is to go over to configuration and see what happens. And what happened is that we have this interesting panel layout shown. Now, normally, if you take a Skyway panel like the REC, um, Fusion, uh, Red Fusion Live, then it will show up with something that looks very much like this one. Now, in this case, I have not gone through the graphic design of making this little um, um, illustration of my panel look like the actual panel. It is more like a a, um, a general representation of it. So it's, it's an abstract representation. You see button one and button two would be these two buttons. We have the dome button here. We have the LED strip and that is represented by this one. This is the relay, this is the knob, this is the fader. But let's try to actually push some of these buttons. So you can see if I push the green button, it will actually highlight button one. If I push this one, you see it, it highlights that one. If I push the dome button, if I move the fader over here, you see I actually, I, I got a, I, I received some kind of signals from it, right? The knob is, is highlighted like this and the relay and the LED strip are only output devices. So what I thought could be fun is to hook this up with an ASIM switcher and have the buttons and the knobs and faders do stuff on an ASIM switcher. Because what I imagine is that you guys often has cases where you need to have a tripwire on a stage or you want to give a button to someone and when he presses that, it's supposed to do something on a router or turn up and down the volume. All those kind of things that uh, there exists no like solution on the market for it. You may be ready to to make this kind of electronic yourself. And what I'm showing you today is how can you do this in an orderly fashion so all your electronics will hook into a professional application like Reactor, and from there you can hook it up with all the devices you want to control. So that's basically the mission of today. 
First, we'll go into the home screen here, and then we will add an ATEM switcher. I think I have one on the network. Oh, discover devices. We have Casper's ATEM Mini right there, so let's just select that one. Looks good. Save, configuring, call is disconnected. Now it's connected. All right, so the ATEM switcher is in place. Actually, I have the ATEM switcher over here, so we can see um, in a moment we'll see this being operated by our panel. Then uh, for, the, for, for this homemade raw panel device, we will create a new custom configuration. So we'll just uh, pick that, give it a name, uh, fun with ATEM. Doesn't matter a whole lot what we call it here. So the whole project that I'm in right here, because I'm running out of the blue pill, the, 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 the blue blue pill here is actually my, this is the device that uh, hosts the application, the React application and connects to the ATEM. So that is the server, this is the blue pill server. And uh, panel two here, my um, homegrown panel, is connected to the blue pill in this way. If we go over to configuration, we can now start mapping these functions because we have just added the ATEM switcher. And now I'll show you how easy that is. So the first thing we could do is to basically uh, click button number one and uh, let me make this a little wider. Then we create a new behavior and the behavior is combination of either actions or feedback like LEDs because that go together in our universe because often it is linked. Like if you select the source on the program bus on a NASM switcher, it is linked with the state of that bus. Like is the source on program? Yes, no. That is usually what you use to light up a button. So uh, we have selected the fun with ATEM layer, which is the configuration we just made and we click create here. This is what happens. It creates a behavior over there in the tree. I click edit. I go to the switcher. I type in, uh, what do we want to do? Okay, let's do cut. So that cut would be like, yep. Uh, if we go down on the transition, filtering cut, and then we need to tell it it's ME number one because there can be multiple ME's. Then apparently, right now, it, it selected something called a behavior called trigger here, but the parameter in the ATEM switcher cut is now what is associated with that button. Let's test it. So we go over to the ATEM software control and now we press the button and you see it is cutting between program and preview. Perfect, just like if I pressed the cut button right there. All right, so the other button next to it, what do we wanna do with that? Um, let's do something with audio. So we'll just create a new behavior here. Again, we are on this layer, so it creates a new behavior with the alias button two, and I will click the edit button to add, and then um, I wanna do something like turn on or whatever. Do we have something like that? Actually. This requires you to know that it is called mix option, what we are looking for. Mix option is, just let me show you what it is that I want to do. Inside of audio, there is this on, off, or, you know, either you turn channel one on, or you turn it uh, off, or you have audio follow video. And those options are called mix option. So I know that, and... Let me see, okay, I selected it already and I need now to select my input. You see, Reactor is also smart enough to know that this ATEM switch is an ATEM Mini and it has four inputs and two microphone inputs. This is why you would get those options right there. That is pretty clever, right? So I'll submit that one and um, and now we, we can inspect the path of the parameter here. And I'm just doing that because I quickly want to take you over onto the home screen. And with the Blackmagic ATEM device call we have developed, if you click that symbol, the edit symbol, you can get to the parameter list. It will open up in a new tab. And in this tab, you can actually scroll through all the parameters that we have implemented for the ATEM switcher. And that is a massive amount. Now, you can also go through all the models because there's a massive amount of models, including all the cameras you can control through this device call. And the point is, if we search for mix option, then I think scrolling through here and go to the next one, we have Fairlight Audio Mixer Mix Option right here. And you can see that the, the three values that we get out of this is zero for off, one for on, or two for audio follow video. And then the, the sources we can use as what is called a dimension will vary depending on the model. What we had would be basically these sources. But the point is that we have these three options for this parameter. And you'll see that in a moment because as we now go back into our configuration, click button number two so we can see what we have here automatically it selected a behavior called step change. And step change is behavior that will take you through the available options. So that is what we got by default, okay? So actually, let's go to the ATEM software control and see what happens. As I'm now pressing the red button, you ready? 
it is cycling through the three options that we just saw. Now, you can actually change this so that it is doing something like just selecting, you know, turn it on. And that would happen if we instead uh, choose set value. So we could go to set value and then the, the value called match value would then again be one of these. So what do you want to happen when we when we click this? Well, I want it to, to, to turn on, okay? So that's actually what we got right now. Let's go over here. We have it on audio follow video. If I press it, it turns it on. If I press it repeatedly, it's, it's still on. If I turn it off, then it will be turned on. So this is how the behavior that you can select here gives you various options for what shall happen with this parameter when there, there's a trigger coming in from my little homemade button here. And in this case, we set a value before we were rotating a value. And you have stuff like, I mean, you can search up toggle if you want. And then you will have toggling uh, for your, your button here. I think toggling in this case is probably indistinguishable from what we had before, namely step change, because it's also going to toggle through the options of it. But it has a slightly different twist to it because, and we can't see it here, but if you had a button with a backlight, it would light up when you have like, uh, I think the first option selected, or if it is not on the default option, which is the first one. So it would light up if it was either on or audio follow video, and it would be off or dimmed if you had it off. Now, let's move on and look at the dome button. So with the dome button, I thought, let's create something that will turn on and off the Kia on the um, ATEM switcher. So once again, we'll just select the um, upstream Kia. So you have different choices here. You could actually road fill and key sources, Kia type. Let me see, Kia cut is actually the one that I would be looking for on ME number one, and that would be upstream Kia number one. Once again, this is not an ATEM constellation for ME with four Kias, etc. Otherwise, I would have had options in that list. But right now we have this one and it selects toggle. So that is a probably pretty good choice because it's gonna go forth and back between the two. Now, let's just go over and check the ATEM software control on the switcher tab here. As I'm pressing this, it is toggling, all right? So I kind of want you to look at the backlight here. Right now it's actually on and if I press it, it is, it's not off, it is dimmed. It could be entirely off as well, but it would be very, I'm not sure the camera that I'm filming this with would be able to see it. See, now, it's not just me pushing that button that manipulates the backlight. Actually, if I turn off the key here, you'll see that the button backlight is turning on and off because it is listening to the parameter in the ASIM switcher. <laughs> That is pretty nice. All right, let's move on. I think the fader we want to do transition positioning with that one. All right, so we'll just do that. Find a parameter in here, transition. And then we could look at different options. What do we want to do? There's uh, actually a few of them that says ah, transition position right here. That sounds right. All right, so we will do that on Emmy number one. And you can see it is basically a fader for transitioning positioning. Now, what about this one? I think I would like to associate that with audio. So let's just create and find a parameter for master audio. Let's turn this um, or search for master, 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 master. So we have a Fairlight audio mixer master volume position. That sounds about right. We could also use master volume display. No, that would, that sounds like being able to read back the position. I think this one is good. All right, so just assign that to it. And that was without any additional parameters really, which makes sense if it really is the master. So, okay, now, yep, there you go. We have the master volume access to that one using the rotary potentiometer. What if we wanted that to be one of the audio channels instead? So volume, Let's just do that audio. So not under master, but what about the inputs volume position for the inputs? In this case, we would be allowed to select an input. Let's select input number two and go over to the, oh, let me see, what does it say? It says, I recommend you to use this kind of special behavior. Okay, sometimes you wanna confirm, other times you don't. And in this case, I'll try to confirm. I am worried though, if this library is, in, is, is already added or if it's not, but let's just try and then see what happens if I turn it around. Actually, yes, thank you. So it is doing that. I don't know exactly what is hidden behind this, but there is, when you select some of these parameters, the programmers behind the integration, they are clever enough to suggest you to use certain behaviors for the most likely perfect interpretation of how this parameter should be mapped down onto your 
fader or your knob or whatever. And in this case, it worked out really well. But again, there are different ways you can actually do this uh, with these different behaviors. The behaviors is how the parameter is translated onto the button. Because if you look in this map of parameters, that is something that it will tell you whether you for a parameter it's like an option list of three options or if it is an analog range. And this is how all our integrations are made. And then over in Reactor, you need to combine that parameter with a certain way it's interpreted on your panel, whether it is a Skahoy standard panel or it's a homegrown electronic panel like this one. I'm now excited to get to the relay because with the relay, we could create a little tally lamp when a source is unprogrammed. So let's just go to the relay here. In this case, it is going to be a um, just a feedback parameter. Okay, let's do that. Um, so here we have the relay and uh, it's already created a behavior for it here. In this case, I think I want to just go rogue and do an empty behavior like this one. So I'll go into show more and then inside the um, uh, feedback section here, uh, what I basically want to do is to create insert at the end a conditional feedback and a conditional feedback is me that you know if, if I want to turn the relay on if a certain condition is in place uh, let, let me just show you what that means if we go into default feedback I could basically go in here and now notice the relay it turned on the relay turned on okay and then if I change this instead of dimmed it says off oh sorry what happened I didn't pick it okay Ah, uh, did I just, I click something else. Oh, I'm so sorry about that, guys. I don't know how, but I just got over onto the knob and I need to be here. So if I change this one to off, it's off. If I change it, I don't know why. You know, why do you change? And I go to on and for whatever reason, it selects the fader. Okay, I can't tell you why, but it did. All right. Anyway, if I'm on the relay and it says on, actually in the standard state, I don't want the relay to be on. I want it to be off, right? So I'll just select off here and then I go over to the relay and then I use the conditional feedback to turn it on in case, so I'll just set on, in case a specific condition is true. So basically here in the condition editor, I will now go into my device course, select the ATEM switcher, then search up for uh, program and then you can search through these and you see program input video source is the one that you want to pick then you select me number one and if that value is equal to and then over here you need to edit the second statement in this case you would typically choose what is called a literal value and I know or you could look it up in this list that an input of a certain type would for all the standard inputs it would be the number one if it's input number one but if it was like Oh, let me see if it was a, a video input source, it would sometimes be like 1000 if it's uh, like the color bars or whatever. So, and sometimes we don't have lookups for this, but I would say if input number one is on program, that relay should light up. So this is the condition I've been setting now. So if I press my green cut button, you will see that this relay is turning on and off because it is listening, it's linked to whether the first input is on program or not. Finally, I want this LED bar to light up with some fancy colors. And again, I can go in here, I can create an empty behavior, which I think I wanna do in this case. So let's just go to the LED strip, then empty this one out and uh, show more. Then I wanna go to the feedback section and just set a color real quick here so I could set it to red and ca I can turn on the intensity to on. And you see now we have a red LED strip which is turned on. I'm able to pick other colors as well. So you can just have fun picking any color that you want for the LED strip. Oops, all right, there you go. Um, And um, the idea, if I want this to be a tally LED, is that the LED strip color would again be linked to a conditional feedback. So actually, for the default, I want it to be off. Or you could also, well, we could actually, why not just have it slightly dimmed? So we'll turn it on dimmed in a warm color. So it's kind of there. We know that it's turned on, but it's not red. All right, so I'll just insert a conditional feedback to handle the case when this LED is, um, or when we have 
red tally. So again, I'll go to my device call and search up tally. Let's do that. Uh, tally source by flag, which is the one that I'll do. Um, let's take input number three. Let's do a program. All right. So if that is equal to, and over here, I'll choose a literal value. I know in this case, it is true that it needs to be. And I can tell you how, because if I go in here, actually, this one tally source by tally flags is a parameter. Let's search it up over here. Tally source by, well, come on. Sorry, tally by source. Okay, sorry, my bad. I will quickly change that. There we go, tally source by flag. You see, this is a binary feedback. And we can see that as I mentioned, we pick the input, but and it has no control. So it's just feedback, this parameter. In other words, having the, the keyword true here is what we're looking for. And if this condition is true, if input number three is on program, then it will light up with an intensity we choose like on and it will also select the color that we choose. Let's pick red. All right, let's see if this works. We go over here and we pick input number three. Yes, it was red immediately. It would go away from it like that. Perfect. Now, uh, I want to add this for another one, which is basically the preview. So we'll just quickly go in here and then we will do the same. Basically pick this one tally by source, we'll pick input number three, we will pick preview in this case, we will edit this put in literal value true. So if it's on preview, then it will select a green color and also have the condition on. All right. And then we could just check if this works. Now let's check this. All right. If we press the cut button, we can press the green cut button here then you see it actually does work. Now, I know also that the only case where it does not work is if I do this, because if I do this, because the condition, sorry, because the condition, the second condition with index 20 is the green one, then it will prior to try uh, prioritize green over red. And that is a mistake. So it has to do with the order of things. I am actually not sure if I can edit that up here and I'm not I don't think I can. So we could also go in and just change the colors around if you want. But a quick way of doing it would be the JSON. And JSON is for many of us a an amazing tool because inside of the JSON, you can see that the small chunks of code that basically takes the condition we set up and associates it with the color red and intensity on and color green and intensity on. We could change the order of these by just typing 30 here, save, and then immediately you can see that 20 and 30, it is swapped around. So now the, the second condition would be the one that paints it red if it's on program. And you see now it is red. And if I go away, it's green. And if I go away entirely, it's back to white. All right, perfect. I actually want to just let you know one thing, because one of the reasons why we have the one called tally source by tally flags is because if you have a key like this one, you should know this. Uh, if you have a key like this one, like a upstream key one, it's a Luma key and you have a fill source like uh, camera number three, then if you bring that key on, it will actually go on program, even though it's a different source that's selected on the program bus. This is why tally is different from the source on the program bus. Right now, this um, source number three is keyed on to the output. And that's why it's now red. That is the correct be tally uh, behavior. And this is why it's important you use that parameter. Dear friends, I thank you so much for following along in this video. It has been pretty, sorry. Uh, I just took you into all the source code of Reactor. Sorry about that. But thanks for following along in this video. I thought it sh it, it's gonna be super interesting for some of you guys to see how easy it would be to build electronics yourself for your broadcast sets and import it in an orderly way into Reactor where you can combine it with any device that you can basically set up in our universe. On the home screen, you just add that device. You have so many devices over here that you can add and you can interact with all the parameters that can be or is described just like you see for the ASIM switches. You have this hundreds and thousands of parameters that you can attach or, or connect to your homegrown electronics to create unique solutions for your TV productions. So um, follow me on the next episode because I want to show you even more. What is the schematics? How is the code looking? 
all the actual details that makes this a raw panel device.